Welcome to part 3 of Let's Play Demons of the Deep by Steve Jackson. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 12. Let's reread this as a reminder. Okay, the trapdoor slams shut behind you as you whirl in the current. You catch hold of something to steady yourself. Uh, you are in pitch blackness. If you possess a glowfish, turn to 258. If not, turn to 113. Okay, did we possess a glowfish? Yes, we do. There it is. Okay, so let's go back to the book and turn to 258. Okay, you fumble in your leather bag and remove the glowfish. When you release it in the water, it expands into a long blue glowing creature. It swims obediently around it swims obediently around over your head, lighting up the surroundings. You see that you are in a large coral grotto with a moderately strong current running through it. What will you do? Okay, um, I just better put some. I've used the glowfish, so so used on that. Uh, wrong one. There we go. Okay, what will you do? Swim upstream, turn to 384. Swim downstream, turn to 221. Try to open the trapdoor and escape. Oh, uh, I'll say that again. Swim upstream, turn to 384. Swim downstream, turn to 221. Or try to open the trapdoor and escape, turn to 365. Okay, we are going to swim upstream and turn to 384. As you swim upstream, the coral grotto narrows until it becomes a tight passageway. Uh, you brush against one wall and are cut by a sharp branch of coral. Lose one stamina point. Okay, let's do that now. Puts me down to 21. Um, ahead of you, you can see that the tunnel narrows still further. If you press ahead, turn to 345. If you turn back, turn to 197. Okay, we're going to press ahead and turn to 345. As you thread your way through the narrow tunnel, you are cut again. Lose one more stamina point. Okay, puts me down to 20. Um... Uh, the current is strong and you are fighting it every bit of the way. Abruptly, the tunnel opens into a small cubicle room with walls that look like polished stone. Turn to 372. Okay. Um, you are in a small cubicle room. The roof appears to be made of ice. The floor is invisible beneath a layer of bubbling steam. Nervously... You paddle between the two. You know you are in the presence of strong magic. In the centre of the room is a misty-looking humanoid figure, clad in a loincloth of seaweed. Uh, the strong current of water is coming directly from its body. The water elemental looks angry at your intrusion and lifts a hand threateningly. What will you do? Attempt to parley, turn to 327. F uh, flee back down the coral tunnel, turn to 58. Or attack with your sword. And turn to 210. Okay, there's the water elemental. Reminds me of um, the lawnmower man when um, when he sort of makes people turn into like little circles or something, and he's just sort of stood there turning into circles. If you've seen that film, but please don't watch Lawnmower Man 2 beyond cyberspace. It's horrendously bad. Although, although I actually do watch it because it is funny. It's so bad it's funny. Anyway, um, okay, we're going to attempt to parley and turn to 327. Okay, uh, you hold out your empty hands peacefully. The misty water elemental lowers its own hand and asks your business. You tell your story. The elemental is sympathetic, but cannot help you. I am a prisoner here, held by the enchantment of the bone demon, it explains. I may not I may not leave this room without a black pearl. Only that will break the spell. If you have such a pearl, turn to 115. If not, turn to 187. Okay, you have such, or rather, we have such a pearl. Um, so we're going to turn to 115.
Okay, you do actually, uh, we just prove that we have a black pearl. Um, we have four of them, so that's good. Okay, um, you do in fact possess a black pearl, so it is within your power to free the water elemental. What will you do? Give the elemental a pearl, turn to 343. Ask the elemental what it will exchange, turn to 242. Or tell the elemental you have no pearl, turn to 187. Okay, um, we're going to give the elemental a pearl and turn to 343. A good deed is its own reward. Okay. That's the moral of this story. Okay, the elemental is overjoyed by your gift. Free at last, it shouts. Now I can get my revenge for this captivity. The steam on the room's floor rises up and melts the ice on the ceiling. A dark hole is revealed. The elemental blesses you. Uh, the elemental blesses you. Increase your initial luck score by one and raise your luck to its new maximum. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so now we have 12 luck. Um, it also presents you with a shining bit of ice. This crystal will not melt, it tells you. Uh, you can use it to call upon me once. I will hear your summons and bear you from bear you from any place in the world's waters to any other place, then it darts away through the hole in the ceiling. Almost instantly you hear the sounds of battle. Finally, silence comes. If you go up and see what happened, turn to 310. If you'd rather return the way you came, turn to 42. Okay, so we have a crystal of unmelting ice. So let's write that down. So crystal of unmelting ice. So that's that, and we only have three black pearls now. Don't forget that. Okay. Um, okay, we are going to go up and see what happened and turn to 310. Cautiously, you inch up the narrow tunnel. You emerge into another room which is somewhat larger than the elemental's chamber. Uh, the room is a wreck. Old bones and broken weapons are everywhere. There is no sign of the elemental or of the demon that it said it would fight. Within a smashed skull, you find two black pearls. Okay, so that puts us up to five black pearls now. That's good. Um, in the ceiling, you see another tunnel leading up. If you follow it upward, upwards... Turn to 361. If you if you go back down to the Elemental's Chamber and the Coral Grotto, turn to 42. Okay, we're going to go back down to the Elemental's Chamber and the Coral, and the coral Grotto and turn to 42. Here we go. Okay. You leave the Elemental's Chamber and squeeze into the narrow coral passage. You are getting rather tired of coral cuts by now. Sure enough, you are injured again. Lose another stamina point. If you are still alive, turn to 197. Okay. So that's another stamina point gone. That puts me down to 19. They're right, I am getting tired of it. Um, okay, turn to 197. You find yourself hovering below the trapdoor once again. If you continue downstream, turn to 221. If you try to get through the door, turn to 365. Okay, we're going to continue downstream and turn to 221. You swim downstream, letting the current help you along. Before long, you encounter a, a huge round door set in a wall. Gripping a coral branch to steady yourself against the current, you study the door. Strange runes are carved on its surface. What will you do? Leave and continue downstream, turn to 162. Knock, turn to 247. Or kick the door open and burst through, turn to 307. Okay, we are going to leave and continue downstream and turn to 162. Here we go. Further. Farther, sorry. Although they're more or less the same word. Anyway, I won't go into that. Uh, I think I've been through it before anyway. Anyway, uh, you continue down the coral tunnel. Um, ahead of you, a huge brain, co huge brain coral divides the passageway in two. One branch goes slightly downwards and to the left. The other goes upwards and to the right. If you go down, turn to 49. If you go up, turn to 395. Um, we are going to go down and turn to 49.
Yeah, oh, that was quick. Okay, the tunnel continues downwards for a while and then divides again. The glowfish swims away, but you can see faint light from both from both tunnels ahead. If you go right, turn to 385. If you go left, turn to 245. Okay, we're going to go left and turn to 245. Okay, you pick your way through clinging slimy seaweed. A dim light comes from some of the ocean plants, so you can see a little way ahead. The tunnel walls change to, excuse me, uh, the tunnel walls change to jagged rock as you go on, and the tunnel seems to slant slightly downwards. Just as you are thinking that it will go on forever, you come to a heavy wooden door. You pull it open and swim through. You have emerged from the face of a cliff. The door swings closed behind you. You panic for a second until you realise that you cannot fall. <laughs> now, hanging suspended in the clear water, you look about you. Turn to 53. Okay. Um, below you and to one side are more buildings. Evidently, the city of Atlantis was very extensive. In front of you is the face of the cliff from which you emerged, pockmarked with tiny caverns and from which you emerged, pockmarked with tiny caverns and festooned with corals, sea anemones. Okay, I'm going to say this again. In front of you is the face of the cliff from which you emerged, pockmarked with tiny caverns and festooned with corals, sea anemones and plants. There we go. You can examine the cliff more closely, 10 to 320, swim up towards the top of the cliff, 10 to 260, or swim out over the city, 10 to 64. Okay. Okay, um, Okay. we are going to swim out over the city and turn to 64. Okay, um, you swim down over the city. As you get closer, most of the buildings seem in rather poor repair, but several things seem worthy of closer attention. Will you investigate a huge palace with striped domes, turn to 103, a large sunken galleon lying on its side, turn to 282, or an area that looks like an underwater garden, turn to 2. Um, we are going to go to the huge palace with striped domes and turn to 103. Bit far. There we go. Oh, not bad. It's quite quick. Okay, you swim down towards the palace. It is the largest building you have seen in Atlantis. Indeed, it is one of the largest buildings you have ever seen anywhere. It is also in a good state of repair. As you swim closer, you see the reason. The palace is inhabited. Two human-looking guards dressed in colourful uniforms are patrolling the huge main entrance. What will you do? Swim quickly down and attack them, 10 to 333. Swim slowly down and hail them, 10 to 35. Or try to enter one of the towers, 10 to 89. Okay, we are going to swim slowly down and hail them, turn to 35. This is fun, isn't it? I do enjoy these books. Okay. Um, well, these swords and sorcery ones, anyway. Um, apart from House of Hell. Anyway, I've said anyway four times now. Right, as you approach, you see that these are not true humans, but deep ones. Their skin is green and warty. Their eyes huge and frog-like. They have gills. They have gills, webbed fingers, and huge claws. They wear jeweled armor. They tell you that King Seamoss is always interested in curiosities like you and conduct you inside. Um, within the great council hall, richly dressed courtiers meet you and conduct you to the throne on which the fat fish king sits. His eyes bulge and he wheezes when he speaks, but his questions are keen. What will you do? Tell your story and ask for help, 10 to 208. Offer him the jade crown, if you have it, 10 to 265. Or ask if you can do him a service, 10 to 4. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, we are going to offer him the jade crown because we do have it, and I shall prove that we have it. Um, there it is, Jade Crown. So I have the Jade Crown. So let's turn to 265. Okay. Um, a rustle of excitement stirs... 
a rustle of excitement stirs the court. The king is very impressed. The great crown of Atlantis, we thought it lost to the mermen. He consults with an adviser. Soon a serving tray is brought with two jewelled arm bracelets upon it. Take these with our thanks, surface dweller. These bracelets are magical. They will not weigh down your arms, but will increase your prowess. While you wear them, your attack strength is increased by one. Now the king asks, is there any way we can help you on your quest? Turn to 296. Okay, so we have the two, well, we have jewelled arm bracelets. So that's jewelled arm bracelets and I've put in parentheses plus one attack strength there we go and new line okay good uh, they're quite good aren't they do I have anything else that's sort of useful that I'm not paying attention to yeah I've used that I've used that a oh, one free go at testing my luck okay I'll save that okay very well um Okay, so we've done that. That's um, your attack strength is increased by one. Okay, so that's very generous, isn't it? Um, anyway, 296. Although I did give him a crown for them, so it's not too bad. Anyway, 296. Here we come. There we are. You explain that you seek to destroy Captain Bloodaxe and his pirate crew. The Deep Ones agree that this would be a fine thing. They even know of the island where the pirates stay. They don't know what the surface dwellers call it, but it is shaped somewhat like a fish, and the pirates anchor in a cove that forms the mouth of the fish. You thank them and leave. Turn to 347. What nice uh, creatures. Okay. You leave the palace of the Deep Ones. To your right is the great sunken ship you saw earlier. To your left is an entrance to the sunken gardens. If you investigate the ship, turn to 282. If you'd rather look through the gardens, turn to 2. Okay, we are going to look through the gardens and turn to 2. Making great progress today, aren't we? Here we are. The underwater gardens seem to be laid out just like a formal garden on land. You swim through the heavy iron gate, noting that it is not at all rusty. Inside the gate, you see many beautiful specimens of seaweed, coral, and water plants. Instead of birds, the trees are filled with coloured fish. It is eerie, but peaceful. Um, a few yards from the gate, the path splits in two. If you go to the left, turn to 359. If you go to the right, turn to 174. Okay, we are going to go to the left and turn to 359. Okay, here we are. The path winds between more seaweed and coral displays. Soon you come to a small clearing. In the middle of the clearing is a marble fountain, but instead of shooting water, the fountain releases a constant stream of fine bubbles which drift to the surface far above. Um, within the bowl of the fountain, you can see something glittering. If you pick it up, turn to 209. If you ignore the fountain and go on, turn to 20. There we go. Okay, we are going to ignore the fountain and go on and turn to 20. You enter a part of the garden that looks rather like an orchard. Tall branches of coral support... Two tall branches of coral support... No, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, tall branches of coral support vine-like plants bearing red and orange fruit there we go on the sandy floor of the garden small crabs and fish are picking at a fallen fruit if you sample a fruit turn to 124 if you go on without eating turn to 234 okay we are going to sample a fruit and turn to 124 The fruit tastes delicious, rather like a pear with honey. It restores two lost stamina points. You try another one, but it has no further effect. You swim on down the path, 10 to 234. Okay, so two stamina points. That's nice. Up to 21. Makes up for two of those things I lost scratching myself in the coral. Okay, 234. Here we come. <clears throat> well, that was the one with the crown, wasn't it? Anyway, um... Mm. 
Okay, 234. The path curves and branches. Ahead of you, it opens into a neatly kept clearing. Uh, within the clearing is a very ordinary looking cottage surrounded by a great iridescent bubble. Inside the bubble, you can see ordinary land dwelling shrubs and even a cat. You swim closer and peer through the bubble into a large, into a window of the cottage. Sorry. Inside you can see an old man sitting at a desk. Suddenly he becomes aware of you and looks up. Meeting your eye, he waves you towards the front of the cottage. His attitude is brisk and no nonsense. If you swim back into the cover of the gardens, turn to 322. If you go around to the front and meet the old man, turn to 135. Okay. We're going to meet the old man and turn to 135. <clears throat> oh, here he is. I think. Yep, yeah, here we are. Okay. The door opens and the old man strides out. He introduces himself as Greylock and invites you in. Cautiously you step through the protect cautiously you step through the protective bubble, feeling your skin tingle. Once inside you find you are breathing air. He chuckles at your surprise. Ah, you are no wizard then. You tell him about the pentagram that bestowed the gills on you, and he nods. A powerful spell. Don't worry, my home here is under a different enchantment, which will not interfere with your protection. You may have heard the name Greylock before. If you possess something bearing that name, turn to 14. If not, turn to 225. Okay. Do we have anything possessing his name or something? Well, there's nothing here. His name isn't here. So... I do remember the name Greylock, though. Oh, I don't know. Um, I can't remember if I fa I don't know if the healing potion we had was still. I'm going to have to say no, but I'm probably wrong. But I have to say no because I haven't written down Greylock's name and I can't remember if I did. So let's do let's get ten to two hundred twenty-five. But before we do that, yeah, I don't know if I do possess something that bears it now. I do remember the name, but I can't remember if the the stamina he. <clears throat> if the healing bottle thing did have his name on it, I just can't remember. I'll assume not, just in case, but yeah, there he is. Okay, so let's turn to 225. Old Greylock is full of questions, and you are not entirely sure you trust him. He is displaying a very keen interest in your doings and in the things and in the things you have found during your sojourn. In Atlantis, I think that's how you pronounce Sir John. Uh, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, suddenly, from a pocket of his long robe, he produces a wand. If you decide to attack him before he can use the wand, turn to 95. No, sorry, 93. If you wait and see what he does, turn to 376. Um... Again, okay, we're going to wait and see what he does, and turn to 376. Okay. He sketches a frame in the air around you and studies you as though you were a picture in a gallery, muttering to himself. Bravery alone will do you no good, he states. Cunning will bring victory. Bravery and cunning together will make your fortune. He studies you further. Have you any black pearls, he asks. If your answer is yes, turn to 175. If it is no, turn to 67. Okay, we do because we have five of them. So let's turn to 175. Okay, he tells you that these pearls are very powerful. If you throw a pair of them on the ground and say the magic word Dirt New Hino, an animated skeleton will appear to fight for you. The word will work for up to ten pearls at a time to produce up to five skeletons, an undead army. Though you shouldn't need quite that many, he comments. If the skeletons are not destroyed in battle, the word Dirt N Pa, uttered by the spellcaster, will make them vanish again, leaving the pearls unharmed. Remember this, says Greylock, and there are more pearls to be found, but most of them are guarded by monsters such as the sea dragon. Now, 
What about silver pearls, he asks. Have you any of those? If your answer is yes, send to 241. If it is no, send to 154. Okay, so let's remember the magic word. So you've got Dird New Hino. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, Dird New Hino. Let's uh, copy that. Uh, right, okay. Um, I have to write that down. I can't copy and paste. Um, so let's put dead new Hino and uh, to use black pearls. I'll say to use black pearls and dead in par um, to unuse them to reverse. Black pearls. There we go. I'll, I'll say that. New line. Okay, so uh, what are we doing? Do we have any silver pearls? Um, negative. So let's turn to 154 because we have none. Well, then, says the old wizard, that is about all I can do for you, and you have to hurry, you know. Yeah, you consider Greylock's advice. If you think you want to find the Sea Dragon, turn to 114. If you would rather not meet the Sea Dragon, turn to 261. Okay. We think, or I think, that we should try to meet the Sea Dragon and turn to 114. So let's go there. Okay. You tell Greylock that you want to find the Sea Dragon. Very well, he replies. Good fortune to you. He escorts you back to the front door of his cottage. and When it opens, you see not the gardens, but a weed-lined tunnel. A glistening film holds back the water that fills the tunnel. You lower yourself through, feeling a tingling sensation as you cross the magical barrier. The door closes behind you. Turn to 385. I haven't done any battles this, uh, this video, have I? That's probably a good thing. Okay, the tunnel enters a large cavern. The walls have been cut and faceted to bring out the beauty of the rock. Little niches contain glittering crystals, attractive plants or anemones, and other undersea curiosities. You swim along, admiring the exhibits. Then you see a merman swimming towards you, barb trident at the ready. If you draw your sword and attack him, turn to 69. If you talk to him, turn to 190. Okay, we are going to talk to him and turn to 190, there he is. Okay, the merman challenges you to explain your intrusion. Uh, you respond politely, saying that you are looking for a way out. He becomes affable and says, just so long as you aren't one of the deep ones, we are at war with them. He escorts you through the cavern, which proves to be spacious and full of mermen and mermaids. You must let us show you some hospitality, he says. Our sauna baths will make a new person of you, or you could try your luck in our games room. If you try the sauna baths, turn to 266 if you visit the games room. Turn to 164. Okay. Um, we're going to go to the games room. Turn to 164. The Mermen's Games Room is a sumptuous cavern full of full of mermen and mermaids displayed disporting themselves and gambling for gold, jewels and trinkets. If you have any gold pieces or black pearls, you may gamble them. You may not take the potion of fortune into this room, as your host would think it unfair, but you may use the lucky charm without being noticed. You, uh, you, do, not have to ha you do not have to gamble at all. If you choose to gamble, decide what you will wager, either one pearl or one gold piece, and test your luck. If you are lucky, you double your stake. Um, if you are unlucky, you lose your stake. You may gamble as many times as you like, as long as you have something with which to gamble. When you are ready to leave the games room, turn to 138. Okay. Okay, let's gamble some gold. Why not? Um, okay, how much gold do we have? We have one gold piece. All right, let's gamble that. 
Let's see how we do. So we're going to test our luck. Uh, now, don't forget we have the lucky charm, which guarantees a luck winning thing. But I have 12 luck, so I'm guaranteed to win. So, yeah, let's just roll three dice and go, uh, two dice and go for it, not three, obviously. And we were lucky, surprise, surprise, because that's less than or equal to 12, which is guaranteed certainty. Um, so let's remove a luck point. We have 12 um, initial luck now, which is good because of the um, rescuing that elemental thingamabob. So, um, yeah, we're down to 11, and we get an extra gold piece. Lovely. So up to two. Brilliant. That was fun, wasn't it? Okay, so let's turn to 138. Um, I don't want to gamble any black pearls, that's a bit too risky. Anyway, the mermen enjoyed your visit and they crowd around you to wish you good luck. Knowing of your quest, they offer advice. If you feel very brave and lucky, they tell you, you should visit the sea dragon, but he is dangerous. If you need information to help you find your path, you should visit the sunken cathedral. And if you need good fortune, you, you should seek out the water sprite, but beware of hungry crabs. They will point out the path towards any of these three. The Sea Dragon, 10 to 62. The Sunken Cathedral, 10 to 202. Or the Water Sprite, 10 to 363. Okay, and we will decide what to do in the next video. So thanks very much for watching. Um, no fighting, which is good. That saves a lot of time, so we can get really far. So we're on 138 next. So next time we will be deciding whether to go to the Sea Dragon, the Sunken Cathedral or the water sprite. So thanks again for watching and goodbye.